All right, guys, why is copper 2 plus blue in solution, but zinc 2 plus is colorless? It all comes down to the electron configurations of these two atoms and the fact that when these two ions are in aqueous solution, they form ligand, or water becomes a ligand on the atom. Uh, here's copper 2 plus. The electron configuration for copper is AR, as in it starts here, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, and then 4s2, 3d1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Copper is 4s2, 3d9. When we remove two electrons from it, it becomes AR, just 3d9. We remove the 4s electrons before the 3d. Now you may have learned that copper is actually 4s1, 3d10, you're right, but it didn't matter here, so I ignored it. Let's do zinc. Zinc is here. So it starts with AR again. We use the noble gas that comes just before it. And then 4s2, 3d, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So it's 4s2, 3d, 10. And zinc 2 plus, again, we remove the 4s electrons. So the difference between copper 2 plus and zinc 2 plus by electron configuration is copper is 3d9, zinc is 3d10. Now, here comes the, uh, the important bit. When a ligand attaches to a metal ion, what ends up happening is that the D level, or in this case the 3D subshell of the third energy level, ends up splitting into two different sections. Normally, a 3D subshell looks like this. Five orbitals. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine electrons in the orbital. But once ligands start forming with the metal ion, that those five orbitals actually end up splitting, or should I say the subshell splits into two different sections. We get two orbitals with a higher energy level and three orbitals with a lower energy level. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine electrons still. But notice, we now have a difference in energy between the two. This is called D-level splitting. And again, it only happens for metal ions when ligands are attaching to them. Now, here comes the extra cool bit. The difference in energy between these two levels is often in the visible region of the spectrum. Which means if electrons can jump from, a, from the lower level up to the higher level and then subsequently jump back down, that light will be given off. In the case of copper 2 plus, this is exactly what's happening. It absorbs light from around you. That electron jumps up. But then, because it's excited, it jumps back down and gives off blue light in the process. That's why copper 2 plus in water is blue. But what about Zn being colorless? Well, let's check out what the, the split 3D looks like for a 3D10. Uh, normally, the 3D for zinc looks like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And the split D levels for zinc would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Huh. There's nowhere for electrons of lower energies to jump to here. If the electrons can't be excited to that higher energy level, they certainly can't jump back down and give off light in the process. Because this is a perfectly full 3D subshell, no visible light is going to be seen 
even when ligands like water attach themselves to the zinc. Don't get me wrong, zinc still has ligands and the D subshell still splits. But because it's full, there's nowhere for electrons to jump to and from. Thus, no visible light from zinc 2 plus. This is why some people say zinc 2 plus isn't even a transition metal because it has a full 3D and thus doesn't do this D, this D light giving off thing with ligands. SC3 plus is also something like that. SC3 plus, I mean, this isn't how you do shorthand, but it's, it, I mean, it's just an argon thing. It's 4S0, 3D0. So the D subshell for that would be, oh, that's it. I'm done. There's no electrons to jump up and then jump back down. Again, it's this energy difference that causes or it's this energy difference that corresponds to the visible light. So there you have it. Most of the transition metals have colors in solution because they don't have full or empty 3Ds. And when they form ligands with water in solution, the D subshell splits and the energy that it takes to excite and uh, de-excite an electron to and from the two different levels happens to be in the visible range. Bam, that's how life goes. You never know what's coming next. Best of luck to you.